So uh, a young guitar student of mine asked me if I could put a video up on YouTube of the stuff that we're learning. And so I thought it might be a good idea to try and give a, uh, an introductory flamenco guitar lesson, um, you know, with the, the uh, big disclaimer that I don't claim to be a, a, uh, uh, by any means a master guitar player. But I do love flamenco very much, and I've been doing it for about 15 years now. And I, 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 this is by no means a substitute for going to Spain and studying or finding a teacher in wherever you live. But I do think that uh, if I can explain a, a couple of basic things to people and get them to understand what flamenco is and the path that maybe they should take to learning, uh, then I'd be glad. So... Um, I'm just going to put this little 10 minute lesson up on YouTube and see if, uh, if anybody finds it at all uh, useful or enlightening. Um, so first of all, flamenco is uh, not classical music. It's not uh, Spanish classical. It's not under Segovia. Uh, flamenco, I think of as most akin to the blues or to jazz uh, in that it's uh, a music that expresses uh, it's it's the the expression it's the expression of a of a oppressed people uh, that have taken both uh, influences from their own roots uh, and the place where they happen to live and mix them together to form an extraordinary art form again like the blues where uh, uh, Amer African Americans were able to kind of bring influence of their own traditional musics as well as music that came from the from where from the United States and create this incredible blend of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, emotional and technical expression. And uh, so in this case, it's the gypsies in the south of Spain who, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of argument about whether it comes from, whether it's more of a gypsy thing or a Spanish thing, and I won't get into that now. But uh, I do think the best practitioners of flamenco, at least the flamenco I like, have been gypsies. Um, Flamenco is a family of song forms, and uh, each form has its own uh, rhythm and uh, and uh, structure. And uh, your your goal as a guitar player is to learn these different forms, and then uh, to be able to make them your own through uh, the, the learning the rhythms, uh, carrying the rhythm in your way, but that's faithful to the tradition. And uh, uh, then you learn these things called falsettas, which are melodic variations within the rhythm. And you'll build up a, uh, a vocabulary of falsettas in the different, uh, from records that you'll listen to. Maybe you'll gravitate towards older flamenco or towards more modern flamenco. And, uh, uh, and you'll learn from different teachers and you'll build up your own repertoire of, uh, of falsettas within each form. So uh, the, the mother of all the forms, uh, the, la madre del cante it's called, is the solea. And from what I understand, the, uh, the, uh, the role of the guitar initially was just to play the rhythm of these different song forms. And uh, 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 it was basically probably a very simple uh, rhythm uh, and uh, without any technical prowess or... Uh, uh, you know, all the things that we associate with flamenco today. Uh, but probably, you know, in the early 1900s, a, a guitar player went home and said, well, maybe in between the singing, I can uh, uh, play, a imitate the melody of the song or make my own melody. And uh, that way, you know, while the singer is not singing, uh, I can, uh, I can uh, uh, be playing something interesting. And, and that's how the first falsetta was born. So the solea is, like many forms in flamenco, is built on a very interesting and complex 12-beat structure. Uh, somebody once defined flamenco as the art that takes uh, 40 years to learn how to count to 12 because, you know, so many of these forms are based on this 12-beat structure. And uh, like many of the forms, the accents of these 12 beats uh, are on the 3, 6, 8, 10, and 12. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, you know, in the most basic solea that, uh, notice I have the capo on the second fret, that just kind of gives it a little bit more of a flamenco sound and also makes it a little bit easier to play. Uh, you might go 1, 2, Again, 
uh, the way you hold the guitar is very important. You know, some people cross their leg like this. Some people cross it like I do like this. Some people hold the guitar up like this. Uh, but the important thing is that it's, you know, against your chest. It doesn't like go outward like this. It's not sitting down like this. You know, all this is also very important for the health of your hands. I've suffered a lot from wrist pains and hand pains. So I, I, I encourage everybody use proper form, stretch before, don't play too hard. Uh, really important. I had to stop for playing for two years once because uh, of my my hand pains were so bad. So take this seriously. Also, because you'll play better if you if you if you hold the guitar properly. Uh, this arm should be relaxed, uh, uh, and then just be able to come up here. Uh, you don't want to be playing over the hole. You don't want to be playing way back here. Although some players like a more trebly sound and play much more back here. Uh, you know, this hand should be uh, same in the back and the and the front here. You should not be. Uh, having the little uh, turtle head coming out, as uh, the great master Manuel Molina told me, uh, El Galapago, you don't want to see. So uh, again, this is this kind of F shape, one, two, three, and one more time, just with the index finger I'm doing, one, two, This is probably what happened in the history of flamenco. Somebody got bored just playing the most basic thing. So maybe instead of just going that, let's go. Four, five. You can often distinguish the solia by this. 10 and 11 and 12 and. Uh, you'll, you'll hear that and more and more elaborate and, and crazy as, as you know, flamenco got more modern, but a couple variations on the 10, 11, 12 are, you can go, or, or with a double. Now, the, one of the more important techniques of flamenco is the rasciado, which, you know, some people think is just like a kind of flop down with all the fingers. That's not what it is. You have to practice with each finger individually going down. One, two, three, four, and five with the hand closing. Or some people do it three, uh, just with one, two, three, four. I, per I personally play it with five. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. You gotta practice it really slowly like that. Don't give way to the temptation of just going like that. Uh, or it's going to sound terrible. Just really even, and then as you speed up, you can go faster and faster and faster until it eventually sounds like this, but always keeping, you know, trying to keep it very distinct. And then you could, to the rhythm we just learned, you can try and uh, apply that to the non accented beats one and two, four and five, and seven. Uh, so it would sound one, two, on that. Now, uh, uh, the first falsetto that I learned uh, uh, when I was started playing flamenco up in Berkeley is, uh, was a, a pretty basic one, but a great one to start with. And uh, it went like this. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, five E and a, six E and a, seven E and a, eight E and a, nine E and a, ten, eleven, twelve. So normal speed would be... I'm doing a golpe, which is a, a hit on the 12. And that's done by just kind of squeezing the fingers like there's like a little motion like this. So 
10 and 11 and 12. So I'm hitting the the uh, the B string with the uh, with my thumb and then hitting this with my with with the with the ring finger. So um, uh, also my nails. Notice I use acrylic nails because my nails are very weak from uh, biting them my whole life. So I go and get uh, acrylic nails done on the right hand uh, uh, every three weeks or so. And uh, but you know you can grow your own. I like to keep them about the length of the of the finger in a kind of rounded way. I keep the index a little bit longer and the thumb much longer. Um, this falsetto that can go into again be elaborated some more. And instead of just resolving back here, uh, the second time you play it, you could go one, two, three, four, five, six. third variation which could be played consecutively as a third time one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven uh, another falsetta that's pretty basic an old Paco de Lucia falsetta is goes like this you have these three fingers starting on the fifth fret here on the E string sixth fret on the B string and seventh fret on the G string and it's all thumb here was uh, I went to Spain uh, after about two, three years of playing flamenco and I wasn't taking these rhythms that seriously. I was kind of being loose with them. And, and no matter how technically good you are, if you get to Spain and your compas, which is the name of the rhythm, uh, is not flawless, uh, you'll be very uh, uh, discounted as a guitar player. Uh, nobody will take you seriously. So I highly, highly recommend practicing from the very beginning with a metronome. The solea can be played anywhere from, you know, 75 beats per minute up to 100, you know, 100. And that's a little fast already. Uh, uh, but, you know, really, and then I like to play with a metronome that gives me accents on the sixes so that I can know when I'm at six and when I'm at 12. And usually I can figure out where I am. But that took me years to find that out and start practicing that way so that my compas would uh, would be uh, decent. And, and you'll he often hear people in Spain saying, oh, he's good technically but he has no compass and it's just forget it and other players could be uh you know not so technically proficient but have great compass or great rhythm and they will be uh you know welcome in any fiesta situation and people will you know the other thing of course is knowing how to accompany the, uh, the singing and the dancing which is the, the the role of the guitar uh the solo guitar is 
you know, is nice, but it's, it's somewhat uh, uh, incomplete. It's much more beautiful to, so, so I recommend, you know, listening to a lot of uh, Kante. Uh, there's tons of great stuff on YouTube. And, uh, 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 you know, if, 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 you, uh, if you find this interesting or exciting, then f seek out uh, a teacher in your area. Uh, if you're in LA, you can find me. Uh, if you are in Spain, you're really lucky because there's going to be a lot of great players. But if you're in Spain, you're probably not watching this. Anyway, I uh, hope you found this useful.